Hi, I'm David Harry, and in this video, I'm going to be doing some outdoor dialogue recording with the Aperture A Lav microphone and a GoPro Hero 3 Plus Black. Okay, so the point of this video then is to test out Aperture's ALAV microphone with the GoPro Hero 3 Plus. And what I'm gonna do is keep this video quite specifically just to outdoor dialogue. I will follow it up with an indoor test and also an unboxing and a kind of technical description of the actual ALAV system as well. And what I will do as and when they happen and come up, I will add them to the end of this video on overlays or you'll find links into the description. But right now, this test is just for the outdoor test. So the first part of the test then is to test the microphone with its own power supply. Now, what's important to point out here is that the, um, the GoPro is actually capable of powering the microphone directly without its power supply. I'll be doing that shortly, but for this part of the test, I'm actually gonna be going through its power supply and into the GoPro. Now, the important thing about that is, is that the microphone is a condenser or an electric condenser, which means it requires an amount of power in order to make the capsule work. So this is why Aperture supply a power supply with the actual microphone, which is really cool because although a GoPro could power it, you might be on another system which can't send power out, in which case that's when the actual power supply comes into its own. Now, although the GoPro can power it, the reason why I'm using the, ap the Aperture power supply right now is so that we can compare it with and without it in case there's any differences. Because that's what I like to do when I test things. If, if there's a number of different ways of doing it, try a couple of different ways just to see if we get any advantages one way or another. So like I say, from the intro up to this point, it's all being done on its internal power supply. Um, the other thing worth noting as well, I'm actually, like by a flight path here as well. Um, so every now and then there will be airplanes, but this could actually also be a fairly good test because we'll see how well the microphone picks up my voice against the, all, the out, you know, all the surrounding noises, such as airplanes and whatnot. Um, the other thing as well about the microphone, it's a omnidirectional microphone, which basically means it's gonna pick up in every conceivable direction. So unfortunately, it will pick up anything, say below it, to the sides, above it, everywhere. But because I'm like the loudest like source of noise to the capsule, it should be picking me up way more than any other surrounding sound. And the other thing with this as well is that most lav mics are omnidirectional. Some of them you get a cardioid, but the vast majority are omni. Okay, so I've done like quite a bit of talking so far now, and this will give us a really good like kind of like example of how it sounds running through its own power supply. So what I'm gonna do now is switch over and just plug the, the microphone direct into the GoPro. Okay, so I've switched over now and I've got the microphone plugged straight into the GoPro and actually th there's its power supply that it comes with. So let me just put that away. Now, the reason why I'm doing this is because, you know, you can plug it in direct and there might be instances when you're out and about and say, for instance, if, you, if your power supply runs down or something, then, you know, instead of getting stuck and not being able to use it, you can plug it straight into the GoPro. But there's a point here that I have to make clear is that when you plug it straight into the GoPro, because of the particular wiring that this mic uses, it only records on the left hand side in the stereo field within the GoPro's audio recording. So when you're listening to this, you're going to hear this in the center in, in both like left and right. But that's only because once I've got into the edit, I've kind of just rebalanced the dialogue straight into the middle. So yet yeah, that's the one thing to bear in mind is that it only records it to the left hand side but like I just said I mean it, it could be a really good thing to have this because especially with a GoPro if you're out and about and because it can power it if you do lose power in the supply then you can just put the GoPro straight in so it doesn't stop you from recording it just means that you're gonna have to rebalance the audio once you get into post-production 
Now, the other thing to note here is, or the thing that we kind of need to listen for, is did we get any tonal change between using its power supply or using the GoPro's power supply? And has it got any noisier or has it got more sensitive? So what I'm gonna do shortly, I will do a count test where I go with and without the power supply. And what we'll do, we'll, we'll check there to see if there's any level or tone change. And then what I'll do, I'll do five seconds each of like just like noise as it were just the environment and that will be with the power supply and again without it and then that one should show us if we're getting any extra hiss or anything like that within the recording okay so what i'll do now i'll get on and do them tests and then i'll come back after that actually before i get into the count tests and the silence tests uh, what I'm going to do now, which is what I've done, I've tucked the whole microphone system out. So now what we're doing, we're listening to the GoPro's internal microphone system. Now, I personally think that the internal mic is great on the GoPro 3 Plus uh, in certain situations. Now, if you're outdoors and it's not windy, it can be great. If you're indoors in the right type of room and stuff, it can also sound great as well. So this is just to give us a bit of a comparison as to you know what it's going to sound like compared to the GoPro's internal sound or its internal mics. The only thing is I'm, I am getting bits of breeze here and unfortunately the GoPro's internal mic system is very sensitive to wind so what we're probably going to hear is a little bit of like wind distortion every now and then on its own microphones. When I was on the, the takes of Just Done with the ALAV, because it's got a little bit of a foam filter on, that will assist in very mild breezes. So any, anyway, this bit here, this is just so we, we've got a comparison to the GoPro's internal mics. Now what I'll do, I'll get on and do the count test and silence test. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay, so just a quick recap then. I've tested the ALAV with its own power supply. And then what I've done, I've done another test where it's being powered by the GoPro through its own electric voltage. Then I've tested the internal microphone system on the GoPro, which just gives us an example of something to compare against. Then I've done the count test so we can kind of hear quickly any tonality changes and whatnot. And then I've done the silence test to see if there's any more noise or susceptibility to whatever in that particular test. Now what I'm going to do is a wind test and use its wind muff or wind filter, whatever you want to call it. Now the only problem is, is where I am right now, it's not very windy or at least the breeze that I'm getting here is probably being handled really well by the foam filter that's already on the ALAV. So what I'll do, I'll go and have a look. If I can't find anything anywhere, any, any decent wind to show it off, I'll cut, I'll cut away to say a couple of clips I already have because before I actually come out and do what I consider to be my proper video, I do tons and tons of testing. So what I'll do, if I can't find something immediately now, I'll cut away to two clips that I've already got in the, you know, in the bag already from my own personal testing. And then what I'll do, I'll come back and I'll do a summary. Okay, so I found somewhere which is a bit windier and um, under normal circumstances you wouldn't want this because i'd imagine this is definitely interfering with the actual microphone so this will just give us an example of what it sounds like without the wind filter or the wind muff so what i'm going to do now whilst the wind's up like this i'll switch over onto the wind muff and we'll see what kind of a reduction we get with the actual wind filtering off the wind muff okay so i'm over onto the wind muff and it really has picked up now actually the wind so hopefully this would this will be in, you know enough of a test for us to see the differences with and without it um, if anything i think it might have just picked up a little bit stronger than what it did do without the wind muff on so anyway you'll be able to hear immediately right now as to whether or not the wind muff is actually knocking out enough of this wind in order to save the dialogue or indeed on the previous go without the wind muff in the wind it may even have been the case that it wasn't that bad i'm not too sure just yet because i haven't listened back obviously but so far during these two bits of tests here 
you can definitely have worked out what you think of the scenarios. Okay, so what I'll do now, I'll get on to do my summary. Okay, so to the summary then, uh, and let me just try and go through the things that I noticed. Um, I mean, regardless of whatever I noticed and what, whatever I think, there's a lot of takes there and anyone can draw their own conclusions from it. But the things that I noticed with these, um, let's see, between the, the ALAV using its own power supply or using the power direct from the GoPro, there were some tonality changes. Um, there was like, one of them was a little brighter than the other. Uh, there was maybe a little bit more hiss in one of them as well. And the level differences were a little bit different as well. Now, I I'm not gonna say which ones I preferred because you know both of them sounded great. So at that point, that's down to personal preference, but there are like a couple of slight little differences in there. And maybe e e enough differences for someone to like one against the other. Um, in the silence tests as well, if you listen really carefully, when, when the ALAV is, is on its own power supply, there's a very, very slight noise, like an electronic noise, right buried deep down in the background. On normal listening, you're not going to get that. Uh, but if you put your headphones on and kind of listen really hard, there is that difference in the silence test. Although that said, it's not the same as the interference you sometimes get in Wi-Fi mode on the GoPro 3. And a really good plus point about all this, when you are in Wi-Fi mode on the GoPro, which I do to monitor, there is absolutely none of that weirdness that goes on. Sometimes you hear like a clicking or like a propeller sound. And what it is, it's the electronics of the, like the, the microphone system and whatnot interfering with the Wi-Fi system inside the GoPro. Anyway, that doesn't happen in, in any configuration on this microphone, which is fantastic. Yeah, so as far as them two things are concerned, that's what I observed. Um, let's see, the wind test. Now, it, it was quite windy, and you could hear a little bit of wind even when I wasn't doing the wind test. Um, not enough to, to disturb the takes. Although when I did the wind test, it wasn't like, it wasn't gale force wind, but then, you know, I personally wouldn't be going out in a, in a mega strong wind with like a lav mic anyway. But you could hear, you could definitely hear a difference in there. Um, the only thing about that is the, uh, the, the actual wind filter is very, very, very obvious. Now, I don't know, you know, maybe if, if you're bothered by aesthetics, then maybe that's a bit of a problem. Although, if you're somebody who's looking to get the best audio take and you don't mind, you know, wearing something like that, you're definitely going to get a better audio take in windy conditions by putting that on it. Sorry about that, I've just had to put an edit in because as I was talking, my phone went, I'd forgotten to switch it off. And I think maybe I've said some decent stuff in the first part there. So what I don't really want to do is try redoing the whole thing from start to finish and maybe not getting it as clear. Anyway, so after doing the power tests, um, like the count test and the silence tests, after that, I mean, I've just put forward what I thought. And, you know, like I say, anyone can kind of like, you know, draw their own conclusions from that. But the one thing I, th I think is like quite obvious, it is a very good microphone. Now, is it the best lav mic in the world? And is it the best lav mic for the GoPro? Well, the answer to them two questions is kind of no, yes, no, yes. And by that, what I mean is, it's, it's not gonna be the best lav in the world, but then it doesn't cost the same as the best lav in the world. You're gonna pick this up for around 30 pounds, which is a very, very good price or a very cheap price for a good quality lav microphone. And as for it going into the GoPro as well, the one thing we also have to make clear with all these tests is that we're subject to whatever the GoPro is gonna to do to the audio. And unfortunately, the GoPros do like automatic gain control. They also have a limiter built in. They're very susceptible to variations in the impedance for the microphones that are being plugged into it. So the GoPro is very hit and miss when you put microphones in. Um, so you could put in like, you know, a 2000 pound microphone and it may not sound that much better than a 30 pound microphone. Now, all that said, what you have to do is kind of test these things for yourself and listen and make sure that you're happy with them results. So as far as I'm concerned, for 30 pounds, you know, you're gonna to have to spend a lot more money to better the microphone. And also, you know, you might, you might not even get it done that well because of the limitations of the GoPro. Now, 
I'm not, I'm not having a go at the GoPro, I'm not criticising it at all, because I think them functions of it, the AGC limiter and all that stuff, and the lack of user, you know, user interface or, or user control, it's probably a good thing, because the vast, you know, the vast majority of people who are going to be using GoPros just want to plug a mic in and go. You know, if you're an audio engineer or somebody with an audio background or anything like that, maybe you're going to get a little frustrated by the lack of manual control. But, you know, I think on balance, it's a great system. Yeah, so anyway, I think I've kind of summed up a bunch of things there, my own thoughts, and kind of hopefully explain some of the technical things that go on as well. So what you should do is check out the links if you're interested. Like I say, they cost around £30, um, and I'll, I'll have links you know, in the descriptions. Also, check out, I, I'll be updating, doing more videos as well with the A-Lav. I also do a bunch of uh, GoPro videos as well and whatnot. So yeah, check them out in the future and whatnot. And uh, I think that's me done now otherwise I'll just carry on talking and talking. Anyway, thank you very much for watching this video. Take care and goodbye now.